there's so much amazingness to be engaged in a training. <laughs> I hope that by now you're really feeling how this creates a structure and we are weaving that structure week after week, month after month into our life. And from that structure, so much blossoming. So welcome to the fourth class of our training, Intermediate Module B. Gathering all of your yoga staff, we're going to be working with the wall a little bit today and coming and taking a seat in Sukhasana to begin our practice. Widening the sit bones apart. Relaxing the legs so that they flow downwards. Closing the eyelids. Beginning to still the mind. Beginning to shine the light of awareness inside. Soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. Relax the feet, the ankles, relax the knees, the thighs. Allowing ourselves to really sit, to be supported in our sittingness. Relax the shoulders. Relax the back of the skull. Watching that outer crispness that we hold in protection dissolve with each breath, dissolving. And then lifting the hands up and pressing the palms together. And from this softer, more open heart space, Open your practice together with one arm. Inhale. Oh. And then releasing the eyes opening. And ready to begin. All right, moving anything that we were sitting on out of the way. And let's come and meet at the front of the mat for our hanging Uttanasan Surya Namaskar warm up, entering into our physicality and breath. From Tadasan, widen the feet apart, spread the toes, observe the way in which we're standing, and adjust so that we feel broad and stable, connected. Hands on the hips, elbows back, inhale, looking up. And exhaling forward, finding hanging with the Allowing the head to relax completely, the back of the skull to relax completely. Each breath easing out tension from the brain, from the face. And as the brain releases and the face becomes more and more neutral, begin to grip the body to compact where needed, to suck the muscles to the bone where needed. And then placing the hands on the mat and stepping back to Adho Mukha Shanasan with the heels lifted and the knees bent, the arms stretched. Feeling the roots of the toes, the heels lifting higher. Feeling the shoulders, the armpits, the back. Breathing into those inner spaces. And now with an exhale, straightening the legs and reabsorbing the femur bones into the hip sockets. And now stepping the right leg forward to a nice wide lunge. 
If you can come onto the forearms, do so, otherwise be on the hands. And just easing into sensation. Starting with the toes, the roots of the toes, the ankles, the knee, the groin. And then resting that back knee and foot on the ground as we come back up onto our hands. Twisting to the right, bending the back leg and reach around with the right hand for the outside edge of that ankle, drawing the foot in. Smooth and even breath that help the muscle to relax, that helps the mind to stop resisting. And then releasing and coming to plank pose. Engaging the core, engaging more strength, the flame burning brighter and brighter, and coming to Chaturanga or Ardha Chaturanga with the knees on the ground. Exhaling. Push out through the inner knees and the inner heels. And back to Adhukashanasa. Lift the heels, stretch the legs, and stretch the arms. With the exhale, push yourself away from the heels of the hands, observing the sensation in the armpits, the triceps. Go into that length, go into those openings. And now stepping the left leg forward to a nice wide lunge. Choosing your height with the hands or the arms and pushing ourselves forward and backwards, greeting the right foot, the toes, pressing into them, self-massaging, inhabiting ourselves more and more fully, and then resting the knee and the foot on the ground, coming up to the hands, and turning and twisting to the left, bending the back leg, and reaching the left arm around and taking hold of the outside edge of that ankle. Smooth and even soothing breaths. Each time just a little bit more, a little bit more. Feeling the front thigh open. The chest lifting. And then releasing and stepping back to Avuka Shalasa. In this downward dog, press the heels down to the ground and lift the toes higher. Now travel up to the roots of the femur bones and the buttocks and find the line underneath the buttocks when you're standing up that line and try to lift that line up to the sky as you press the heels down. We relax the face, the back of the skull. Keep lifting the line underneath the buttock up higher, pressing the heels down. And now walking forward, feet the width of the mat. Change the cross of the arms from the first time. Dropping the head down, hanging Uttanasa. Keep broadening the shoulders, broadening the back. Be curious everywhere, investigating, adjusting, refining, trapping the mind into the moment. And then bringing the hands to the hips, the heels firm, elbows back as we press and come back up. And stepping the feet together. Tadasa. Okay, we're ready to move into our standing poses. And today we're going to use the wall. So I'm going to move the camera so you've got a better angle 
of the wall work. So when our mat is going to be parallel to the wall. So go ahead and organize that for yourselves and I'll see you back here against the wall. Here we are. It's a great way to work with the wall behind us. We're gonna have a, a lot of fun exploring. Our first pose, simplified Vrikshasana. So standing in Tadasana, the heels up against the wall, micro bend the knees, tilt the pelvis and get the lower back flush to the wall and then push into the feet, particularly the heels as you straighten the legs and keep the lower back towards the wall. Grip the thighs up, arms in front, interlock the fingers, turn the palms out. And now inhale and lift the arms up, press the heels down, grip the knees and thighs up and see how that brings lift to the front spine, the front trunk and the waists. Pull the arms higher and higher, Little fingers to the wall, and three, and two, and one. Coming back down, releasing, and changing the interlock. Turning the palms out. Reconnect with the feet, particularly the heels. Grip the legs up. Inhale and lifting. And visualize all of the organs lifting up. The lungs expanding. And five, keep the lower back to the wall. And four, keep gripping the knees and thighs up. And two, and one. Coming back down and releasing Tadasana. Full Vrikshasana, so I'm doing the mirror image of you. We're lifting the right leg up and placing the heel as high as possible. Rolling the inner groin to the outer groin and trying to bring this inner knee towards the wall without dropping the hip out. So squeeze the hips towards each other. Arms in front, interlock the fingers, turn the palms out, and inhale and lifting. Keep squeezing that left outer hip in, rolling the inner groin to the outer groin, lifting up. That's it, now lift the organs too. And three, and two, straighten those elbows. And one, coming down and releasing straight into Tadasa. Even out the weight on both of the feet, changing sides, bringing the left leg up as high as possible. Press the inner thigh and the foot against each other and keep that activated. And from that action, roll the inner groin to the outer groin, the knee towards the wall without dropping the right hip. Squeeze the outer hips in towards each other. Bring the arms up, change the interlock of the fingers, turn the palms out, and inhale and lifting up. Keep the sole of the foot and the inner thigh pressing against each other constantly. A dialogue going on in that part of the body as we lift, as we stretch. Keep rolling the inner groin open, and three, and two, and one. Coming back down and releasing, finding Tadasana. And now coming forward, Hita Tikkanasana. And so in today, using the wall behind us, we are going to use blocks even if you don't need them. Take blocks because it brings a different experience to the pits. So one on each side. And now let's widen our feet apart. I should have to move this one back because it gets in the way of the, way of the back foot. And we want to make sure to put the block just behind the heel, between the wall and the foot. So that foot has to be a little bit away from the wall, but this back heel is touching the wall. Roll the front thigh open, grip the legs, stretch the arms, and avoid that tendency of, oh, we're coming this way, already lifting the left shoulder blade off the wall in preparation. Be more alert in the back arm to stop that from happening. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, reach. Keep that left shoulder blade, that back shoulder blade against the wall. Don't let it come away from the wall as you reach. Grip the front femur bone into the hip sockets. And now placing the hand on the block and stretching the top arm to the sky. Make sure the outside edge of the back heel is firm and the back inner knee is squeezed. And now travel to your front buttock, the right buttock bone. And you might feel it poking back against the wall. 
Try to scoop it forward and then twist the trunk. And again, scoop that front leg bone forward and twist the trunk. Stretch the arms apart, but draw the arms into the shoulder sockets simultaneously. And three, and two, and one. Inhaling up, back shoulder blade to the wall, lift the chest, and facing. All right, going to the other side. Left side, placing the block, having a nice width, and bringing the back heel to the wall. Roll this front thigh open so the kneecap is forward, grip the legs, arms lifted, and feel your back body through the presence of the wall, guiding the shoulder blades. Inhale, exhale, reaching, and as you reach, don't let that back shoulder blade come away from the wall. Push the front buttock bone forward, grip the legs, and now coming down and stretching the top arm to the sky. Traveling to the back foot first and make sure the outside edge of that back heel is pressing, the back inner knee is squeezed, and then the front leg, the femur bone, really coming into the hip sockets and you find your front buttock. Feel it against the wall and try to nudge it forward as you turn and twist the trunk. Stretch the arms apart, but keep the integration of the arm bones and the shoulders. And two, and one. Inhaling up, and exhale, releasing. Okay, moving this block to the side, and turning to the right, bringing this block in. Parashva Konasa. Back heel to the wall, nice and wide stance, so we can have a nice 90 degree angle on the front leg. Lift the arms for the back shoulder blade on the wall. Inhale. Exhale, make a square. Widen the distance as needed. Inhale. Exhale, reach. As you reach, keep the back shoulder blade on the wall and come down, fingertips to the block and stretch the arm up. Now turn this top arm, the thumbs against the wall and extend diagonally, keeping the thumb to the wall. Push the outside edge of your front thigh into your arm and turn and twist. Don't let that knee come in. Keep pushing it against the arm. Now find that front buttock bone and nudge it forward. And twist again. One more time. Nudge the front buttock bone forward and twist again. That's it. And three. And two. And one. Coming back out. Both shoulder blades to the wall. Back up. And releasing to change sides. Moving the spot. Turning to the left. Setting up. Grip the legs. Even though we know we're going to bend this leg, we start off with it gripped from a state of awakeness. Stretch the arms. Inhale. Exhale. Make that square. Widen as needed. Grip. Inhale. Exhale, reach, absorb this femur bone, keep the back shoulder blade on the wall, and bring the arm up, stage one. Keep that front heel firm, and the outside edge of that thigh pressing against the arm. Turn that top arm, the thumbs against the wall, and extend the arm over. Keep turning so that the top shoulder blade doesn't come away from the wall. Turn. Turn. Keep the outside edge of the back foot firm. Tractioning from that outer thigh in the arm. Turn. Turn. Now find the front buttock bone and nudge it forward. And turn again. And again. Nudge it forward and rotate. And two. And one. Coming back through Vila imprint. And back up. And exhale. And Okay, moving this just to the side, 
hanging with the nasa. Feet the width of the mat, turn the toes in, the heels out. Exhaling forward. Holding on to the upper arms. With an exhale, release any tension, build up in the face and the brain. Find the feet, press down. And with one smooth movement, relift the knees, the thighs, the roots of the femur bones. And yeah, the trunk descends more when that action comes into play. The inner groins rolling back, the outer hips squeezing in. And then the hands back to the hips. Press to lift up. And exhale. All right, Virabhadasana number one. Going to the right hand side first. We're going to start facing the right. So step your right leg forward and your left leg back. So the outside edge of your right thigh and hip should be close to the wall, guiding us there. Make sure this back foot isn't turned in too much. A little bit out, but not turned out either. So in actual fact, the hip naturally goes back a little bit, and then the front thigh rolls it open to place it. Push into the back heel. Push into the front heel. Squeeze the knees and thighs up. Arms in front. Press the palms together and lift up. And now with an exhale, make that square. So have enough width between the feet that you can really bend the front knee as deeply as possible. Now with an exhale, press into the outside edge of the back heel and stretch the arms up. Feel the right hip against the wall and keep trying to move it back, back, back. That's it. And absorb the right femur bone into the hip socket. Push into the back heel again. Squeeze the back of your knee straight and re-stretch the arms over and over again, lifting more than you thought possible. And three, and two, and one. Coming back up. And exhale, releasing. And turning to the left-hand side. So really maintaining awareness of this hip against the wall, drawing it back, helps us to really draw the femur bone in. Taking a nice wide distance, finding the correct turning in of the foot. We're still a part of the hip, naturally, anatomically, so to speak, is opening, and then the thigh is rolling in. Press into the back heel. Feel the hip against the wall. Palms together, cross the thumbs. Inhale, reaching up. Find the outside edge of that back heel. Press down. Squeeze the back of your knee. Inhale. And exhale. Feel the hip rubbing against the wall and draw it back as you exhale down. Repress into the back heel. Activate the back leg constantly. Press down into the front heel. Absorb the femur bone. Draw the hip back. Keep drawing it back now. Stretch the arms, the elbows. Lift the chest to the sky. Go deeper with the legs and taller with the trunk. And three, and two, and one. Coming back up and turning back through the middle. And releasing. Okay, feet up with us now two to the right hand side. No block needed, just make sure that back heel is pressing against the wall and the front foot is a little bit away from the wall. Grip the legs, roll the back thigh open this way, roll the front thigh open this way, and so that energy meets behind the buttocks and coming towards each other and pressing forward. Stretch the arms, feel the shoulder blades. Inhale, exhale, make a square. 
Move that inner knee, round the front of the knee to the outer knee, feel the wall on the outer hip, the buttock, press it forward. The buttock should be facing down, not going back. Down, press into the outside edge of that back foot, both shoulder blades on the wall, and turn the head. See if you can get the left ear towards the wall. Keep the back arm alert, I mean the right ear. That's it, turning, stretching. Good, deepening, stay nice and low. And five, and four, and three, and two, don't go up yet, stay low. And one, inhale up. And releasing to change sides. Turning the feet. Rip the legs up and roll them away from each other and feel the buttocks coming towards each other. This muscle wraps around, finds the glutes and they come in towards each other and then the middle buttock presses forward. Lifting the arms, lift the chest, inhale. And exhale, make that square. Check with your eyes. Look at what the knee is doing. Press into the outside edge of the back foot, squeeze the back inner knee, go lower. That's it. Both shoulder blades on the wall. Keep the back arm alert and turn the head so that the left ear is as close as possible to the wall. That's it. Stay nice and low. Be firmer than your pain. And three, and two, and one. Inhaling up. And releasing. Hanging Uttanasa. Externalizing the heels a little bit. Exhaling forward. Grip the legs. If we don't grip the legs, we can end up just overextending the groins, the backs of the legs. We have to contain the opening with the gripping upwards. Really lengthen the breath. Re-relax the face. And then bringing the hands to the hips, pushing through the heels. And stepping the feet together. Tadasa. All right, time for Ardha Chandrasana. So we'll be using our two blocks, one on each side, coming through Trikonasana and into Adha Chandrasana. So right hand side first, block in its place there for now to meet us in our Trikonasana. Grip the legs, roll the thighs open and feel that meeting point, the buttocks behind, the middle buttock pressing forward. Squeeze the outer hips together. Inhale. Exhale, reaching. And now move the hips to the back of the mat, absorb the femur bone, and finding Uti Tantrikonasa. Turn, top shoulder blade to the wall. Now lower the top arm, bend the standing leg, the front leg, and absorb the femur into the hip sockets, and return. Preparing to move this block forward as we shorten the distance between the feet. All of the weight is on that front foot, turn. And now push and begin to lift. As you straighten the standing leg, squeeze the femurs into the hip sockets. Press that front buttock bone forward, like Trikonasana. And from there, stretch the arm and turn and twist the trunk. If it hurts the neck for some reason to look forward, look straight ahead or even down. And then try to turn the trunk without straining the neck, without involving the neck. Top shoulder blade to the wall. Keep gripping the legs. Turn and turn and turn and turning. And at the last minute, see if you could bring your head so the eyes are looking at the sky. And three, that's it. And two, good. And one, lowering the top arm. Bending the standing leg, draw the femur in. Stepping back and immediately taking width and finding Trikonasana. Grip the legs, roll them away from each other. 
Turn the top arm and extend to Pashtapanasana. Stretch the waists. Don't let the front buttock poke back to the wall. Push it in, turn from the navel. And then inhaling up. And raising. Okay, moving this block out of the way and coming to the left hand side. Ardha Tangrasana. Rip the legs, roll open. Find the action of the buttocks. Exhale, reaching. And now move the buttocks and the hips back. That's it. And absorb this femur bone and come down and find Tikkunasa. Keep gripping the legs. And now extend the left arm down, I mean the right arm down, the side of the body. And roll, turn, keep that top shoulder blade connected. Bend the standing leg and absorb the femur bone. It's a different way of bending. Preparing to move the block and to shorten the distance between the feet. All the weight is on that front foot. Now return, top shoulder blade to the wall. Femur in and beginning to lift. Lifting, charging, expressing everywhere. And as we straighten the standing leg, draw the femur strongly in, open the chest, and turn and stretch the arm up. Arm up, arm up. If it's hurting the neck at all, remember to look forward or down. The nice thing about looking down is that we can then see how much we're really turning from the trunk. Often we turn the head and we think, wow, I'm doing a great job of turning. But you're taking it in the head and it's making you feel that. So release the head out of it and try to turn the trunk. Push that front body bone forward. That's it. Turning from the navel. And when you feel ready, then see if you could gaze up at the sky. And three. And two. Grip the legs. And one. Lowering the top arm. Bend the standing leg and draw the femur into the hip socket. And step back. Real width. Finding Trikonasa. Rip the legs and roll them away from each other. Press the front body bone forward. Turn the top arm. Push up and arms. Stretch the waists without poking the front body bone back. Draw it in. Push into the outside edge of the foot. And two. And one. Inhaling up. And exhale. Releasing. Tadasa. And now it's time for Vira Padrasana 3, where we use the wall to guide the outside edge of the arm, just moving this side. So, coming to the right first, stepping our right leg forward, I have to move right back because otherwise I'll end up in the wall, and the left leg back. Palms together, cross one palm over the other, and lift up. Relax the jaw, grip the legs, turn the back thigh in, inhale, exhale, make a square, get up and now one. Draw the outer right hip back and draw that front femur bone in with that action. Press the back heel down into the mat and peel the chest open. And now extending the trunk forward. Laying it on that front thigh and moving the back foot in so there's a shorter distance between the feet. Now feel the outer right arm shoulder against the wall. There's our stability point. Femur's in. Lower, lower, lower with the trunk. Really on the front thigh. And now extending, lifting the back leg, charging, rolling it in. Really having that Vinavadasana 3 back leg. Let the wall gently sustain you. Make sure that you're really stretching the arms. Move the shoulder blades down the back. Stretch the arms. Grip the legs. Femurs into the hip sockets. Heels firm. Go with it. Stay with it. Five. Four. Three. You can do it. Two. And one. Stepping back. Lay on the front thigh. Palms together. V. 
via the drasana one. Absorb the theme of our head. Lift the chest up. Press into the back heel. And then coming back up. And releasing. Changing sides. Left leg forward. Right leg back. Roll the back thigh in to turn. Grip the legs, femurs in. Palms together, cross the thumbs. Extend, make sure the elbows aren't bending. Have nice clean lines everywhere. Energy circulating through that cleanliness. Reaching up, no obstructions. Chest open, inhale. Exhale, make a square and draw the left hip back and the left finger go into the hip socket. Press into the back heel actively and relift the arms. And now extend forward and lay on the front thigh, moving the back leg into all the weight on the front foot. Ready, come down, lay down. Stretch the arms. Feel the outside edge of your left shoulder arm against the wall. And begin to lift. Roll the back thigh in, squeeze the back of the knee, push out through the foot. And as you straighten the standing leg, grip the femur in. Stretch those arms. Back hand your shoulder blades. Move them down the back as you stretch the arms. And five. And four. That's it, stay with it. And three. And two. And one. Step back. Palms together. Inhaling up. Virabhasana one. Pull the left hip back again. Press into the back heel. Extend. And back up. And coming back down. And raising. Hanging with Panasa. Turning the toes and the heels out. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhaling down. Holding on to the upper arms and dropping the head right down. Keep moving the outer arms towards the palms of the hands to keep the shoulders broad so that the skull and the brain can pacify over and over again. Relengthen the breath. Soothing the system with the breath. Neutralizing mind. And then releasing the hands. Hands to the hips. Press into the heels, coming back up. Okay, time for Parivrita Trikonasan with the ball. Now, we've done this before in some of the other modules, and we did it, let me show you, like this, when we were turning to the wall. And today, we're going to do it the other way. It's really interesting, really fun. And so, to set ourselves up with the right leg coming forward, you will need to make sure that the right leg is forward, away from the wall, and your left leg is back, closer to the wall. Turn the hips. Now place this block here in preparation. We're coming down. As we come down, the hips and buttocks move back, the trunk comes forward, and we reach our left arm across and place the hand on the block. So, Bhattvotanasan, beginning Trikonasan, Parivrita Trikonasan. First of all, let's just turn and rotate, twist, finding the twisting point from the navel. That's it. And now, arm in and extend. Press into the back heel. Grip that front femur bone up. 
Squeeze the outer hips in towards each other for stability in the lumbar. And now twist from the navel. Now bring the arm down in front like this. And we're going to lift it three times with three exhales. So ready, inhale. And exhale. And back down. See if you can get the top shoulder blade to the wall. Inhale. And exhale. And back down. Third and final time. Inhale. And exhale. Hold it there. Open the chest. Look up. And two. And one. Coming back down. And back up. Okay, let's turn now. And do the left hand side. Left leg forward, away from the wall. And right leg back, close to the wall. Placing the block in preparation. Rip the legs, press into the back heel. Exhaling forward as the trunk comes forward. The legs and hips and buttocks move back. Femurs in. Now reach across and press the right hand to the block. Now let's begin to rotate from the belly button. One more time. That's it. Now squeeze the outer hips towards each other, keeping the lumbar stable. Arm in. And extend. Finding Padipita Thikonasana. Let the wall guide you. Feel the back body becoming intelligent there. Twisting from the belly button. Back heel firm. Back and the knees squeezed. Femurs coming into the hip sockets. Now bring the arm down halfway. Three exhales. Lifting the arm with the exhale. Ready? And back down. Grip the legs. And again. And back down. Third and final time. Grip the legs. Stretch the arms. Turn the head. And three. And two. Back your firm. And one. Arm back down. Facing forward. Coming out through Pashvatanasa. And... Releasing. Stepping the feet together. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Turn us up. And now it's time for Pash Vutanasana. And we're going to have the wall guide the right elbow just enough to really help us to move the outer arms back, the elbows back, while staying stable. So right leg forward, left leg back. You don't want to be too close to the wall or you won't be able to bring the arm behind an inverted namaskar if you're feeling too scrunched. Bring the hands behind and find inverted namaskar. And feel your right elbow against the wall. Move the outer arms back. Grip the legs, roll the back thigh in. Inhale, lifting the chest. And exhaling forward. As we come forward, the hips and buttocks move back and the trunk extends. Feel the difference of the hips and buttocks moving back as the trunk extends. There's two different lines that the wall help you to both move the elbow back and to stabilize. Keep drawing the femur bones in. Reaching with the chest for the leg, not the head. Think of leading with the cellular chest. Press the palms together as much as you can and relax the back of the neck, the skull, but keep that full vibrancy and awareness in the feet, in the legs. Inhale, looking up, coming up. Re-gripping the legs on the way up. Elbows back. Press the dorsal spine forward. Lift the chest. 
arms and releasing and changing sides. So left leg forward and right leg back. Making sure not to be too close to the wall, you can always move out after, but having enough freedom for the left arm to come behind and be in Pashigal Namaskar. Turn the back thigh in, grip the legs, bringing the hands behind, Pashigal Namaskar. Make sure that you're the right distance where the wall is helping you to move the outer arms back and the elbows back and helping you to stay stable and on the central middle line. Push into the back heel, squeeze the back inner knee, inhale. And exhale, coming forward. The elbows moving back. Now feel the hips and the buttocks moving back and how the trunk extends forward from that. Keep gripping the legs. Look at your back foot. If the toes are white, you're putting too much pressure in the toes. Press into the heels. Push the front thigh, that back leg, back to the thigh bone. Grip the femur bones in. Extending the trunk, leading with the cellular chest. Outer arms back, elbows back. Try to press the base of the hands together. And then preparing to come back up, slowly observing the movement, the back heel firm, the legs gripping on the way up. Breathe lift the chest, press the dorsal spine forward. And then exhale, releasing. And turning to face the mummy to the mat. Prasarita Parodarasan, using the wall. So widen the feet, but don't yet have the heels touch the wall because as we come down, it blocks and we feel we're going to tumble forward. Have a little bit of distance. Press into the outside edges of the feet, grip the legs. Inhale. Exhaling, coming down, re grip the femur bones in and place the fingertips to the floor. And now move the heels back. Feel the sit bones on the wall, widen them apart and make them sharp as opposed to round. So sharply broaden the sit bones and press them to the wall, press the front thighs to the wall. Feel a new facet of the pose being revealed. Observe that. Back ribs in. Lengthen the waist, move the sternum forward. Keep pressing the front thighs back Gripping the femur bones. And now exhaling forward, stage two. So the heels of the palms can come right up to the wall. The forearms are against the wall. Keep squeezing the inner knee all the way up to the end of your groin. Lift the trapezius muscles, drop the head right down. The back of the skull completely relaxed in length. In letting go -ness. The heels of the hands firm, helping you as much as the feet. Re grip the femurs up, sharpen them as they enter into the hips and draw the sit bones again sharply to the wall. And then looking up, bringing the hands a little bit forward and moving the feet a little bit away from the wall so that we can rise up. Elbows back, chest lifted. And releasing. Prasarita Tadokanasana, number two. So adjusting the feet and bringing the hands behind in an inverted namaskar. Move the elbows back towards the wall, press the dorsal spine forward, grip the legs, inhale, and exhale, coming forward. So 
So our buttocks are not against the wall here because our heels aren't touching. If your buttocks are against the wall, you should know to bring them forward and re-grip the knees and thighs up. Relax the back of the skull completely. Press the hands against each other to move the elbows away from each other, to bring broadness as you bring the outer arms back. Preparing to lift. Be firm in your grippingness as you lift. Using hands. Heels and toes in. And then jumping the feet together. And refinding Tadasana. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. And we are now going to move back away from the wall. Thank you all for your guidance. The wall never lies. <laughs> And I'm going to move the camera and we'll meet back on that. Parigasana is next. And we have a new variation away from the wall. So let's come and be kneeling. Taking blankets, if needed, for the knees. Hands on the hips, outer arms back. Chest lifting. Press the middle buttocks forward and press into the tops of both of the feet. Going to the right first, using our right hand to help lift the right leg up and move it to the side like this. Hand here, windmilling, and with an exhale, turning. And again, and again, and back up. Placing the hand now on the inner knee, windmilling. And turning. Push that inner knee back. And back up. And now, I think I have to move a little bit over here. From here, extending the leg on the heel. The foot lifted. Grip the leg, roll it open. Grip the leg. Squeeze the outer hips towards each other for that stability in the lumbar area. Inhale the arms and turn the palms. Lift the chest. Inhale. Exhale, dorsal hand running down the shin and top arm over. And now twist from the navel. And back up. Reroll the front shoulders back. Grip the legs. Inhale. Exhale, windmilling, dorsal hand to the shin, arm coming over. And back up, re-stretch, one last time, grip the legs, inhale. And exhaling, reaching, absorbing the femur bone, dorsal hand, the arm coming over, and extend. With the exhale, turning from the navel. And coming back up. Re-extend, pull the hands back a little bit. Stretch, lift the chest. And hands to the hips. Using the hand to help us to bring that foot in. And then bringing the knee back in and redistribute the weight evenly on both of the feet. Lift the chest. I'm gonna move over. All right, coming to the left-hand side, lifting the leg. Windmilling. And exhale, twisting from the navel. Back up, hand on the inner knee, inner 
calf, windmilling, pushing that inner knee open, and with the exhale, twisting from the belly button. And back up, extending this leg, the heel firm, the toes lifted, grip the leg roll it open, grip this leg, femurs coming in, lift and tighten the outer hips towards each other, extend the arms and turn the arms open, re-extend, feel new areas opening, inhale, exhaling the dorsal hand to the leg, the other arm coming over, the hand sliding down, and exhaling from the navel. And back up. And windmilling, reaching, absorbing the femur bone, dorsal hand down, sliding down as the other arm comes over. Straighten that top elbow. And back up. Re-squeeze the hips, lift the chest, last time, inhale, exhaling, reach, feelers in, sliding the dorsal hand down, the other arm over, maximize, grip the feelers in, and turn and twist from the belly, and inhaling back up, re-squeeze the outer hips, stretch the hands, the arms back, to really penetrate in the chest, and exhaling, hands to the hips, then bring this foot in, and then knee back down, and sitting in Vajrasana. Okay, time for Sutta Pilasan. So gathering what you need for your Sutta Pilasan today. Many options, two bolsters, one bolster, no bolster, one leg at a time, and always, if you have two legs, a strap. So, getting what you need, let's meet back on the mat for our Sukta Vidasana. This is my setup for Sukta Vidasana today. And I'm showing it this way for people who have very painful front arches of the feet. And a way to relieve that whilst you're in Sukta Vidasana. So we've got the bolster, we've got the blanket for the neck and head, and then we've got this blanket which I've unfolded and I've rolled this little bit in, and the tops of our feet are going to rest over this. And you'll see the relief that it can bring if this area is painful for you. So coming to the front of our mat, and placing, you can see already where the roll is going to be useful. The strap over the trunk. Tightening up, pulling the calves back and out, and then moving the bolster, and you're sitting on the roll as well, so there's a little bit of a lift. Now pull the skin and the kneecaps up, preparing to come to supta, making sure the outside edges of the feet are pressing down. Use the hands. Coming in, tilting the pelvis, finding our support or not support, adjusting for the neck and head. Now remember when you're on a bolster, you're going to hold the upper arms, so stretch the arms, holding the upper arms and bring the arms back. If you're on the floor, you're crossing the thumbs and stretching the arms straight back on the floor. See how that roll is just supporting the dorsal foot and the dorsal ankle beautifully. And we can really try to press the outside edges of the feet down towards the earth. And see how that translates up through the ankles, the shin, to the knee, when we're pressing the outer edges of the feet down towards the ground. 
soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. Every now and then, re-tilt the pelvis and see if you can feel the beautiful abdominal stretch that comes in this pose. As you're traveling through the pose, observing, following breath, keep relaxing the eyes, noticing how often they're darting around or how often are you blinking. These are the signs of an overactive mind at this point in time. So keep releasing the eyeballs, releasing and diminishing the fluctuations of the mind stuff. It's now time to change the cross of the arms, or if you're doing one leg at a time, you're changing legs. So for those of us changing arms, bring the arms back up, stretch the arms straight, and change the cross of your thumbs, or the cross of your arms, and finding Sutta Virasana on the other side. Retilt the pelvis. We have to press into the tops of the feet, in order to find the strength to lift the buttocks up slightly and to move the sacrum towards the knees. So the buttocks are on the ground, but they're not just passive and inert. They're being directionalized to enhance the opening and to keep the lower back from overarching, from softening. And now see if you can feel more sensation of the abdominal cavity lengthening, broadening, stretching in all directions. The eyeballs receding. The temples flowing towards the hair. Keep the shoulders broad so that we're not congesting the neck. The neck is the gateway to the brain. We want blood, oxygen, prana to flow uncongested. So broadening the shoulders, the outer ears coming in towards each other, softening. back up, releasing, hands back to the mat, find the outside edges of those feet, press down, and then lifting up, and releasing, freeing the buttocks, moving them back. Lift the pubic bone up, lift the belly button to the lower back. Let's widen our straps and release our knees, coming forward to Yoga Mudrasa. Femurs into the hip sockets. Hands coming forward. If ever you feel strain in the knees, pull the skin of the kneecaps up again. And you'll feel an immediate difference there. Breathing smoothly, breathing evenly, nothing jerky. That mindful entry. Pushing the hips back, pushing the femurs back, stretching the trunk forward. And 
exhale. Walking the hands back in. And let's free and release our legs. So moving the right leg out of the strap and extending it back. Squeeze the inner knee, roll onto the joints of the foot back and forth. And then changing sides. And coming out. Transformative Sutta Vidasana. All right, Shirshasana. So if you're using a wall, coming into the wall. If you're not using a wall, let's clear all this up and meet back here for our Shishasam. In today's Shishasam, we're going to use a strap and we're going to put the strap around our big toes. So, little tiny loop, you might need to just stand up to place the strap, buckle in the middle, and then um, Let's lift up and see what that brings to our Shishasan. <laughs> so stretch the arms, turn the palms up, outer elbows scooping in, bending, holding the shoulders, scooping the outer elbows in, and coming down. Forearms down, interlocking, the tips of the thumbs pressing, the hand bracing, the arms bracing, the shoulders bracing, that compact strength that we're igniting and now crown the head to the floor. Relift the shoulders, press the outer wrists down, and now we're going to turn the toes under, straightening the legs, rebrace, bringing the feet in, rebrace, coming through stage one, bending the knees. Lift the shoulders up again firmly. And feel the front groins deepening into the hips. Stage two. Pointing the toes towards the floor. Virasana. Ironing the quadriceps to the femur bones, not allowing them to be bulky. Lats in. And now extending and finding Shishasa. So watching the strap in front of us. And of course the strap will move as we move. Now it's normal that there's a certain amount of oscillation. We can think of ourselves as the flames of a candle. There's a steadiness. But still, the tip of the flame is moving. But if your strap is wildly moving, then there might be a little bit too much oscillation. So using the strap to help us to feel more what's actually happening. Relift the shoulders. Now the big toes are strapped together, which is perfect. We want to keep them connected and slightly separate the inner heels apart. Move the legs back more and move the sacrum towards the heels. When the heels are slightly, the inner heels are slightly separated apart in this way, we can really feel the action of the thighs rolling in towards each other and the inner groins moving to the back groins. And then to make sure that there's balance, we still want to squeeze the outer thighs in and squeeze the outer hips in and recharge the legs. And now stabilize, watching the oscillations of the strap. As smooth and as steady a breath as possible.
And now just as an experiment, we're almost done. We can think of something that troubles us a little bit in our life, whatever it is. Think of it and then watch the oscillation of the strap. It's like a muscle test. Things collapse a little bit, we lose that steadiness. So the power of thought, observing that in action. And as we re-steady the body, our mind also strengthening, allowing us to spend less and less time in those darker mental areas, bringing us to the light, to steadiness. Preparing to come down now through our stages, bending the knees. Virasan in Shishasan. And then stage one. As we come down, relift those shoulders up. Don't let there be any crunching in the neck, the head, the face. And then extending the legs, feet to the floor. Sitting back on the heels. And stretching the arms forward, the yoga mudrasa. Shoulders broadening, the back broadening, the hips broadening. And since we've been using the wall a lot today, let's continue so that we can use the wall for our feet in Halasana and also Ikapalasana It's a nice way to feel the pose from a different perspective. So gathering everything you like to use, some people like bolsters for Samangasana, otherwise blankets, a strap. If you like to have blocks for your knees in Kalapidasana, remember to bring them with us and we'll meet with the mat perpendicular to the wall. I've got four blankets and today I'm making a very diagonalized slant to the blankets. It's interesting to see how different setups affect the shoulder, neck and skull. So I really encourage you to explore and find a setup that really works for you in this area. And the blankets, the neat edge is facing the wall. And you might want to lie on them and roll over and just make sure that the soles of your feet can connect to the wall before committing to coming into the pose. So just checking our distance. So that it's about like this. And then we are ready to begin. If you have blocks for Gamma Vidasan, you're placing them here. A little space between for your head and our straps, inner armpit to the inner armpit. All right, Sarvangasana. Rolling up, rolling the shoulders back and placing our arms through their straps, interlocking the fingers, stretching the arms and re-rolling the shoulders back. When everything feels just perfect, place the hands on the back, press the back ribs in, and stage one, bring the heels to the buttocks. Front femur is coming deeply into the groins. Stage two, trying to move those front thighs back and the middle buttock forward and the sacrum towards the knees like a virasan, subta virasan, upside down. And then from here, extending the legs and finding Sarvangasana 1. The breath, of course, will change a little bit with each pose. Just try to be in evenness. Even if it's shorter, that's fine. Just a sense of evenness.
the arms pressing down continually, like feet densifying. And see if we can bring the hands up the back higher, closer to the ground. Now recharge the legs. The knees love to bend just a little bit. Create a long line of energy out through the legs and out through the feet and reaching up to the sky. The outer edges of the feet coming back towards the hips. Now imagine a strap around the big toes like we just had in Shishasan and spread the inner heels apart just a little bit. And with the inner heels apart, feel the thighs rolling in and the inner groins moving back. And then balance that by squeezing the outer thighs in and the outer hips in. Outer arms pressing down. The eyeballs relaxing backwards. The trapezius muscles going towards the elbows, away from the ears. Re-squeeze the knees, re-sharpen the ankles. Femurs coming into the hips. Preparing for Ika Parasabangasa. Keeping the left heel where it is, the left leg where it is. Slowly lowering the right leg. And the sole of the right foot pressing against the wall. So not going down all the way, even if you can. Lining the foot up with the hip. Press into the foot to really engage the leg and to draw the femur bone into the hip socket. Outer arms pressing down. Squeeze the outer hips towards each other. And lifting back up, Sarvangasa. Changing sides. Lowering the left leg. Watching it, making sure you're rolling it in. Finding the wall with the sole of the left foot and pressing in order to draw the left femur bone into the hip socket. Relax the cheeks. Relax the eyes. Keep charging through the legs. And coming back up to Sarvangasa. Line up the inner big toes. Pull the outer edges of the feet back down towards the hips. Lift up. And now lowering both legs without coming through our stages. We're lowering both legs straight and the soles of the feet are finding the wall. Bring the arms behind the back, interlock the fingers, and try to roll the shoulders back again. Press the upper arms down. Press the front thighs up. Push the feet into the wall, 
to absorb the entire head of the femur bones in a 360 degree circumference into the hip sockets. The breath even, well modulated, observing it. And now changing the interlock of the fingers behind the back. Reroll the shoulders back, press the arms down, press the front thighs up. Now separate the inner heels a little bit, keep the big toes touching. The thighs are right in front of the eyes, roll them in towards each other. And move the inner groins towards the sky. Now squeeze the outer hips towards each other, whilst keeping the inner groins rolling to the sky. And feel the new balance on each side of the legs. Now soften the face again. But keep the body electric. Back ribs in. And now we're going to bend to the knees, the feet are still on the floor, and we're just going to take the strap off the arms and bend the knees to the forehead and then the knees to the ears, onto the blankets or onto the blocks, the dorsal foot on the floor. Wrap the arms around behind the backs of the knees. Holding onto the elbows. Lightly squeezing the inner knees in towards the outer ears. And check that your ears aren't pushing back against the inner knees. Instead, have the ears absorb the energy of the inner knees so that they go inwards towards each other. The outer ears moving towards the inner ears. Another layer of pratyahadic depth. Smooth breath, observing the pose from inside of the breath. The mind steady, following the breath. And now changing the cross of the arm. finding where we left off, that same depth. All of these details bringing us deeper and deeper into the essence of each asana, into mineral mind. then releasing the hands to the floor and we're gently going to roll out and normally I have us move back in what's called a Situ Bandha Samagasan exit from Savangasan and today I'm going to have us move forward just so you know should you ever be in a class and the teacher says exit with the Shabasanic application from Savangasan that means coming forward so the entire spine is on the mat. Inner knee is resting. And then coming over and out. 
All right, last and final pose. Sit to Vandasamangasa. Blocks, wall, strap, no mat. And let's end with that beautiful shape expressing itself before our shavasana. So gathering your equipment, let's meet back here. I'm going to use three blocks today, just to always give you little variations. So one block is going to be like this against the wall, a little bit lower for my heels. And then two blocks as opposed to one, just a little bit more stability in the area of the sacrum and the back hips. Having that to the side, and let's kind of lie down and get the straps on our feet, on our legs. Getting into the habit of always placing the buckle in the middle. And then taking your blocks, lifting the hips and bringing the blocks in by lifting the heels and lifting the hips even higher. Making sure the blocks are lined up. And if you're using two, you're immediately going to feel how, instead of pressing the tailbone up directly, you're supporting around the sides of it. And so it just feels a little bit more stable for certain types of backs. Again, going with this idea that our vehicles are all very individual, so exploring different options and finding variations that really just eureka for us. <laughs> and now let's bring the hands behind, interlock the fingers behind the blocks, and like Halasan, roll the shoulders back and press the outer arms down. Press the back ribs up. And now the legs, the heels finding the block, the soles of the feet finding the wall, the inner big toes touching, and the inner heels slightly separated. Okay, now we're pushing and we're sliding back and finding the fullest expression of the pose. Bring the chin towards the throat now so the back of the neck is long. And with an exhale, release the edge of the shoulders to the mat. Don't hold them up. So much holding on in the shoulders. Effort, strain, worry, poor shoulders. I think that's why we have the expression, I carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. Well, let's let that weight go here, very consciously. And feel the corresponding happiness in the chest, in the side ribs, in the sternum. The mind is still harnessed within the details of the pose. So keeping it present here and now through the vehicle. Press the heels down, press the front thighs down. Squeeze the outer thighs in, the outer hips in. Press the tailbone up, the middle buttocks up, press the front thighs down. Be part of that glorious opening of the abdominal cavity. And think how that's rippling through to the organs inside. And then notice the eyes. How much moving around, how much blinking is there. Steady the mind directly through the eyes. We're going to change the interlock of the fingers now. And then re-roll your shoulders back so the back armpits are coming up through the armpits and flowering up through the top armpits. re the heels. Reclaim that intelligence and the purposefulness of the legs. And now with each inhale, we're going to, in our minds, divide the inhale into three. The first part of the inhale is going to fill the back ribs right here, showing my hand, if you can see. 
And then effortlessly, the middle part of the inhale will come to the side ribs. And then the last part of the inhale will come to these frontal ribs, expanding and lifting. So here we go. Back, side, front. Keep actively pressing the outer arms down. Back, side, front. the interlock of the fingers, bending the knees, the soles of the feet connecting to the earth, turn the heels slightly out, the toes slightly in towards each other, press, grip the buttocks and press the middle buttocks and the hips up and back down, coming up a second time and back down. Third and final time, really lift, moving our blocks. And as we come down, we tilt the pelvis so that the lower back has the immediate support of the earth, the abdomen receding towards the lower back. And now straps off the legs, rolling over. Pushing ourselves up and the yoga mudrasan in sukhasa. Block for the forehead, which really supports the meditational entry as the brain recedes, as the eyes recede, we move into that meditational state. So deepening that, exhaling, coming forward. Just the forehead on the block, not the nose, obviously. And not too close to the nose either. Keep moving the trapezius muscles down the back and walking the fingertips forward. Let the armpits be alive. The ears are spiraling forward. The skin of the forehead is following this Jalandarabandha action and moving towards the nose, not the scalp line. And then back up, changing the cross of our ankles. And exhaling forward, Yoga Kudrasana. Lift the forearms up, lift the elbows up. Now feel the sides of the neck long and even. The ears energetically spiraling forward. And feel how that helps us to soften our throat and simultaneously move the skin of the forehead towards the nose. now time for Shavasana. So let's take our mats, let's take all the supports we want and come and melt into Shavasana in just full, unclenching, unfettered letting go -ness. If you like having support underneath the knees, take that of course. We're lying down. I'm going to cover up today because it's a little bit chilly here in Switzerland. And this is my favorite blanket. It comes from Iyengar's first studio. So it's really old, lovely cotton. They don't make it like this anymore. 
and I must admit that I do have attachment to it. <laughs> so I'm going to get really cozy in this. The neck and the head supported. And then check your feet. Often one foot is more open than the other. So first of all, line the inner feet up. And then just separate the heels a little bit so that each foot is in line with the hips. And now from the root of the leg, let me move the blanket so you can see the root of the leg here. Roll the inner groin to the outer groin. Roll the inner knee open. Roll the inner ankle open, the big toe towards the little toe. And just check that the sacrum is moving towards the heels. And then when everything is positioned and the back body feels as even as the front body, extending the arms, the little pinkies are moving towards the thumbs. And then the eyes closing into Shavasana. Loka samastaha sukinho parantu. 
ओम शांति 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 मे द यूनिवर्स नेव लव मे द यूनिवर्स नेव पीस एंड मे वी हेल्प ऑल दोज दैट वी कम इनटू कांटेक्ट विद टू फील द सेम ओम पीस पीस And in your own time, rolling over to the right hand side. Amen. Coming back up. Opening the eyelids gently. Remember so much of the fluctuations of the mind. are impacted by vision. So for brutal the opening of the eyes and it's a kind of brutal cock. I want to keep the fluctuations as mild as possible, diffusing the gaze and coming back to our everyday external lives with that state of expansive open steadiness. I hope you enjoy your practice. I look forward to hearing more as you integrate this new training back into your life. And see you tomorrow for the fifth and final practice of this module. Namaste. Be well.